find the distance between the lines L1, x plus 3 over minus 2 is equal to y minus 5 over 3 is equal to z plus 2 over minus 1. And L2, which is x plus 2 over 2, is equal to y plus 2 over minus 3 is equal to z minus 3 over 1. First of all, we need to write these in their uh, vector form. We, because they all start with x, y, and z, we can know that the point that the first line goes through is minus 3 plus 5 minus 2. So, write that as a column vector. Minus 3, 5, minus 2. Now, the directional vector will just be this, minus 2, 3, minus 1. And we'll just have some parameter we'll call lambda times minus 2, 3, minus 1. R2 will be minus 2, minus 2, plus 3, plus some other, uh, some, uh, other parameter we'll call mu, and the directional vector will be 2, minus 3, 1. First thing we notice is that this one here is actually, this uh, directional vector here is actually a multiple of this, this directional vector. So V1 is actually equal to minus V2. For the sake of complete, completeness, we're going to call this point A and this point B. And therefore, we can see, we've got to notice that V1 is equal to minus V2. Now, what does that actually mean? It actually means that the two lines are actually parallel. One vector is a multiple of the other. Or, in fact, it could be the same line. But checking some points, you'll soon realise that they are parallel. Now, if we go to our GeoGebra app, we can see here I have the, have the two lines here. This is line 1, and this is line 2, and we can very easily see and later we'll look at it in 3D as well, that they are actually parallel. Now, how are we going to find the distance between parallel lines? Well, we need to click some points. Let's click some points. Here is the point A, and here is the point B. This is actually given in the question. These are this coordinates and these coordinates. Now, what we need to do is to create a vector. We're going to call this vector A to P, where P is just some general point on the line, all right, and then what we're going to do, we're going to make the vector A to P at right angles to L2 and L1, and therefore that will be the shortest distance between the two lines when, when this actually forms a perpendicular between the two lines that actually, if we can find the magnitude of that vector, it will be the shortest vector. So let's look on how we're going to do that. So let A be a point on L1 and P be a general point on line 2. Then the vector AP is the same as going AO plus OP. So the vector AO is going to be minus or changing the sign of each of these. So it's going to be minus 3, minus 5, 2. And a general point on this line is going to be minus 2 plus 2 mu. Minus 2, minus 3 mu. And 3 plus mu. Yeah, adding those together, we're just going to get uh, 1 plus 2 mu, 3 minus 2, minus 5 plus minus 2 is minus 7 minus 3 u, 2 plus 3 is 5 plus mu. Now we want this vector now to be perpendicular to this line. Well we have a directional vector, so if we set the scalar product of these two vectors equal to 0, that will guarantee that we can find a value of mu where they're at right angles to each other. So AP is that, and R1 is that. So we're going to, for the shortest distance, we require A dot V2 equal to 0. Therefore, we're requiring A vector AP to be perpendicular to L2. So AP is that, V2 is that one and that's equal to zero. So we need to do two times this, so it's two times one plus two mu, minus three times minus seven minus three mu, plus one times five plus u, and that's equal to zero. So we now got an equation for mu, we now solve that. So we've got two plus four mu, mu 
minus 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 three times minus seven is plus twenty one and plus nine mu and then we've got five plus mu is equal to zero so two plus twenty one plus five is twenty eight and four plus nine plus one is going to make fourteen so we've got twenty eight plus fourteen mu is equal to zero so fourteen mu is going to be equal to twenty eight mu is going to be equal to minus 2. Now if we go back to our GeoGebra app here, so if I now click here, I will actually get a vector joining AP, this is P as well, joining up this line and this line. If I move the slide a little bit, okay, you can see the point P there, it's in dot B. I would need to make these two angles here, this angle and this angle, equal to zero. So in order to do that I need to uh, make take the directional vector of that line and the general form of this vector in terms of mu and put the scalar product of them both equal to zero. And we just did that and we found that when we got mu was equal to two which I'll do now minus two sorry okay we actually can see that we actually have a vector AP where this is, this is a right angle and this is also a right angle. And therefore, all we need to do is find that vector and then find its magnitude. So, AP will be equal to, so not easy to substitute minus 2 into here. So 1 plus 2 minus 2. 7 minus 3 times minus 2, and 5 plus minus 2, that's going to give me minus 3, minus 1, and 3. If we just nip back to that, we can see there's, there's the required vector there when we got the value of mu equal to minus 2. And hence, this angle is 90 degrees, this one will also be 90 degrees. That's the shortest distance between those two lines. So, the required distance is going to be the magnitude of AP, which is going to be the square root of this vector, minus 3 squared plus minus 1 squared plus 3 squared, that's 9 plus 1 plus 9, which is root 19, which is approximately equal to 4.36. We go to this again here. I'm just going to unclick these. Now, if, at this stage, if you have free 3, 3D glasses, you can stop the video. But if you have 3D glasses, then put them on and click here or right click if you want to, right click and you can go to graphic mode and go to projection. You can do this in the um, one that's on the internet as well. Okay, and click and then you'll get to see it all in 3D. So there we have our two lines. We can very easily see now in 3D that those two lines are parallel. Okay, if we click, okay, the point A, uh, B has arrived there, and the point A has arrived there. If we click again, and I'll move it away from minus 2, we get a general point P, a vector A to P. So we've got the vector from here, along here, to here. Alright, and what we need to do is make that line perpendicular, and we do that by making the value of lambda equal to minus 2. And if we look around there, we can see that, that gives me the actual shortest distance between the shortest vector between those two lines. And if I calculate its magnitude, I get root 19 or 4.36. This is what it looked like in a 3D. And again, you can use the rotate view to have a look at it from different point angles. Be careful when you take your glasses off and let your eyes readjust.